This tutorial looks at the issues that arise from transporting crude oil from place to place and also looks at cracking, a method of making more useful products from crude oil. So, crude oil is only found in certain parts of the world and that means it has to be transported from place to place either by pipeline or by large sea tanker. And either of these can cause problems in the transport, particularly with tankers if they're involved in a collision. As you can see from the top pictures, these birds have been damaged by crude oil which has been spilled out of a tanker accident. You need to be aware of some of the environmental problems caused by transporting crude oil and also some of the damage that can be done by the accidents that occur on the way. When oil tankers taking oil from one place in the world to another collide with something or another tanker, they can crack open or indeed sink and the oil will spill out into the sea. Of course that will wash up onto beaches causing all sorts of environmental damage but it will also particularly affect seabirds. The oil will get onto their feathers and that will mean that they can't fly and therefore can't hunt for food. They will also eat that oil and that will cause death. Another issue to birds is caused by the clean-up operation. Often Detergents are used to disperse the oil, but when the detergent gets onto those seabirds it will strip the natural oils from their feathers which will cause them to lose their waterproofness. And if they're no longer waterproof then the water will seep down to their skin, they will get cold and they will die of the cold. Here's a past exam question. It says, look at the diagram. It shows how crude oil is transported from an oil well to a refinery. Crude oil is transported in a ship to oil refineries. Sometimes these ships have accidents and crude oil spills out. These spills make oil slicks. What about one environmental problem of oil slicks? We might say that the oil gets onto birds' feathers. meaning they cannot fly. And here's the mark scheme for that question. As you can see, they do allow quite a wide range of answers from damage to marine life to pollution of beaches and so on. This graph here shows the issues that arise from the fractional distillation of crude oil. Just to explain the colouring, the demand is the amount that uh, consumers want for each of these fractions, but the blue colour is the supply that you get, percentage terms, from fractionation. And you can see here that with petrol, not enough petrol is provided by fractionation of crude oil. Similarly with diesel. Whereas for some fractions, the supply from fractionation is more than can be sold. For example, with paraffin and heating oil and fuel oil. So, what the oil companies do is to crack certain fractions and make them into others. And this involves uh, heating the oil at high temperature with a catalyst. And that breaks down long... This is what you need to know then. The cracking needs a catalyst at a high temperature. It breaks down large molecules into smaller ones that are more useful, like petrol. And it makes also useful alkene molecules uh, that can be used to make polymers. This is the apparatus you could use for doing cracking in school. What we've got here then is some liquid paraffin. That's one of those fractions which there's uh, too much of. and that's heated in a tube along with a catalyst. Here it's broken porcelain. The paraffin passes over the catalyst as a vapour and breaks down into smaller products. Those products then continue along this tube and in this cooled uh, section of the apparatus, the petrol, that would be the shorter chain hydrocarbon, um, becomes a liquid and condenses but another product continues along the tube and goes into another tube where it collects as a gas. That one would be the very, very short alkene molecule called ethene.
This shows the kind of chemical reaction that you might get. On the left hand side we have the original alkane found in paraffin and that's got 10 carbons and 22 hydrogens in. So that's a saturated hydrocarbon with only single carbon-carbon bonds. When that's heated it breaks down and as you can see a couple of carbons have snapped off the end and we end up with a shorter alkane uh, C8H18, that's actually called octane, would be in petrol, and then we've got this very short alkene with a, and you can just about see here, a carbon-carbon double bond, um, and that would be ethene. Ethene can be then used to make polymers. This has shown it cracking in one place, but of course any carbon-carbon single bond in this original molecule could break, um, that's caused by the high temperatures and the use of a catalyst can break that at any place. So, in fact, rather than getting specific products, what we can get is a variety of different products. So, for example, the alkane could end up with seven carbons and the alkene could end up with three. Cracking then needs a catalyst and a high temperature. They cause those carbon-carbon bonds to break. It converts large alkane molecules, which are in surplus, into smaller alkane molecules, which are more useful and more valuable, like petrol, and also alkene molecules. The alkene molecules are useful because they can be used to make polymers, and the whole process is done because the oil refinery wants to match the supply of useful products it can make, such as petrol, with demand for them. Here's a past exam question. Leslie and Emily investigate what happens when liquid paraffin is heated. Look at the diagram. It shows the apparatus they use. The experiment changes large hydrocarbon molecules into smaller, more useful ones. What's the name of this process? The process would be cracking. What is liquid uh, X? That's the liquid that was collected in the first tube. That one would be petrol. And what's the name of gas Y? That was the gas that collected in the second tube. That one would be ethene. Broken porcelain is used in the reaction tube. Explain why it is used as a catalyst. And there we have the allowable answers from the mark scheme. Here's another question. One of the processes that happens in an oil refinery is cracking. Look at the list of sentences about cracking. Which of these sentences about cracking are correct? Cracking converts small molecules into large molecules. Well, no, because it's the opposite. Um, cracking needs a catalyst in a high temperature. That's correct. Cracking separates crude oil into fractions. No, that's fractional distillation. Easy to get those two mixed up. Cracking is used at an oil refinery to make more petrol. Yes, that's correct. And just check the last one. Cracking works because different fractions have got different boiling points. No, that again is fractional distillation. Finally, here's a longer answer question. Write about cracking. Your answer should include the conditions needed for cracking, what happens to hydrocarbon molecules during cracking, and why cracking is a useful reaction. More modern questions wouldn't tend to give you these bullet points as, as pointers, so you'd have to kind of work those ones out yourself. But I would say uh, cracking needs a high temperature and a catalyst. I would say the long hydrocarbon molecules break down to shorter hydrocarbon molecules say like petrol plus short alkene molecules 
and why cracking is a useful reaction. It makes more useful products. Like petrol, which is in demand and valuable. As you can see from the mark scheme, there's quite a variety of different things that you could have written, so have a quick look at the possible answers you could have written. But essentially it's one mark for giving the conditions like high temperature or high pressure possibly, or catalyst. And then further marks for talking about the chains being broken and more useful products being made. Uh, hydrocarbon chains into shorter ones.